I just recently purchased an X Session Pro. Uh, you can see what it looks like over here. It's just a MIDI mixer with a bunch of knobs and faders. Um, it's convenient for when I'm doing live shows. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I set it up with my live set. So when I'm playing shows, as of right now, this is the way I have it set up. Deck A, deck B, two percussion decks, and then just dividers. Um, let's see, in deck A, I have these EQs, which I mapped with the low, mid, and high on the X Session Pro. I have the volume faders mapped, crossfader mapped. These three knobs over here are for effects, um, like high pass filters. And let me show you how that's all done. First, go into Preferences. Um, go to MIDI Sync. Make sure that your device is showing up and it is turned on. At first, it would not let me MIDI map, and I did, had no idea why. And then I went into MIDI Sync, and I found out the remote was turned off. Um, if you're having that problem, just try that out. Make sure that the remote is turned on so that you can control it in Ableton. You're going to want to first go to MIDI. Now these are settings I just made earlier today. Um, I know what they are, this is saved, so I'm going to delete them. And I'm going to recreate them and show you what I did. Now it's as simple as turning the knob once you have MIDI mapping turned on. So I have this three-way EQ. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to click on, I'm going to just turn the low knob, this knob right here. I'm going to turn the mid knob, turn the high knob. Now one thing I don't want is for it to go to 6 decibels all the way up, so I'm going to change all of these to 0. I'll leave the last one on 6 just to show you what it does. So, now if you look down here, if I turn it all the way max, it's going all the way, and the rest of these will stop at 0, because I don't want it going all the way up. Just my preference. Go back and change this to 0. Um, another thing you can map is the volume, so let's just click on here, and just moving the volume fader, it showed up. Now the volume, again the volume all, goes all the way up, which I don't want to do. I want it to be so that when this fader is at the very top, it's at 0 dB. So yep, now it's at 0. Another thing I can set up is this auto filter. And I'm going to use this knob right here. Just for the auto filter, I'm going to click the on button and then turn the filter. I'm going to set this to 1. So what that does is every time this knob is turned up past 1, so anywhere from a range of 1 to 127, which is the maximum range, it will turn on. And I will map the same. I will click this run here. And I'll map the same knob to that, except I want a maximum of, let's say, 10,000 kilohertz. Turn MIDI off. So now, watch what happens. It turns off when it's all the way down. And as I turn it up, it goes up all the way to 10 kilohertz. Now, let's see. We can map the Q as well except I'm just going to put in random You see that? You can have the Q automatically go up with it. So basically what I'm getting at is that you can have multiple parameters or multiple MIDI mappings set to the same knob or the same fader. But you have to be careful that you don't accidentally set up the same fader to do two things that you don't want to do at the same time. There's some other cool things you might want to check out if you're looking to map things. Um, on the master, this up, down, and play. I'm just going to map these to some random buttons just to show you what they do. So if I have this selected, I can go up and down if you're looking to play scenes. It's always something. So essentially you can MIDI map anything that turns blue 
or a weird purple whenever you click this MIDI button. If you understand the concepts I just explained, then you should have no problem mapping the rest of your session. Thanks for watching, and if you have any other questions, just leave a comment below or message me, and I'll get back to you and see if I can help.